So I want to discuss the possibility of a black swan event that could be coming this weekend. And now this is not really a black swan event, more so a gray swan event that can have big financial implications for the U.S., for the economy, for the markets and for inflation. So I think this is vital, paramount information that you need to know. On top of that, we will discuss the path forward for Tesla. Let's go ahead and get started. But first things first, don't let me forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel because it's free 99 and costs you absolutely nothing to do so. And we keep you informed, not only on what's going on in the news each and every single day, but I share my opinions because opinions are the only thing of value on financial YouTube. For all of those reasons, you should hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. But let's get started with this potential Black Swan event. It is being reported as of 48 minutes ago that Biden is leaving his trip early and heading back to the White House amid this fear, I guess, if you will, that Iran is going to strike Israel with up to 150 different missiles launched from Iran itself. Now, some of these, most of these will be intercepted, but the goal is, as far as Iran is concerned, to get some of these missiles to launch Israel. Now, Here's the situation as far as the markets are concerned. This is an interactive map of the oil tankers on a daily basis. And a vast majority of the world's oil supply flows through the Strait of Hormuz. If this does escalate into something larger and a larger conflict in the Middle East that could directly involve the U.S., Israel, Iran, or who knows who else, Hezbollah presumably at that point, then you're probably going to slow down the flow of oil. At least initially, oil prices will rise and then we'll see what happens from then. And this could be very problematic for basically the world, but especially the U.S. that has been doing very well, specifically the economy and our markets. As I have said before, oil touches everything that you have, you can look at in your home. Look around. Just look around in your home. Right now, just look around. Everything you look at, at, le at least if you're not, you know, someone that lives off the land, which presumably is not most of you guys, it has been transported to you using oil. It may or may not have been produced using oil as well. So oil, in terms of inflation, vitally important. Vitally important. And oil directly going up or down um, can influence not just oil in your inflation reports, but everything else. It's fairly easy to imagine a scenario in which Israel, yes, attacked the consulate, the Iranian consulate in Syria. Um, and, you know, Iran attacks back and then Israel attacks back and we attack back. And there is this dramatic uprise in the price of oil. That's probably going to happen at this point. Question is, really, does the supply of oil become constrained and does oil really just explode, right? I don't think the question is, is oil going to go up or down? Oil is going to go up. Just how much? I think that's the real question. And it depends on the next 12 to 24 hours. Um, presumably, that's what you know the U.S. Is, is, is calling for, is some kind of strike coming here soon. And then uh, what what is the implication to oil after that? Just imagine the scenario where gasoline hits five, six, seven dollars a gallon on a national average basis for the U.S. Whew. Inflation, yeah, kiss that goodbye. Inflation is going to be really high at that point. But what oil also does is when it goes up, it's it's such an important commodity to everyone, especially here in the U.S that it really slows down economic activity. Like, it really can slow down economic activity. And in fact, before you actually go into recessions, historically, you have seen spikes in oil. Most notably was the spike back in 2007, 2008, when oil went from about $82 uh, or $70 a barrel up to as high as about $140 a barrel. And then what happened? Well, everything came crashing down. Oil came back to, you know, $40 a barrel or so, and uh, the economy was in a very rough place. That's, I guess, the most notable one. But basically, before most recessions, you do see a spike in oil. 
And, you know, that can ultimately be a catalyst that pushes you into a recession. If you are already on, you know, weak, wobbly stilts, the price of oil, the price of gasoline going up 50 percent, you know, in a relatively short amount of time can definitely have a huge effect huge effect on economic activity. That's really why the situation in the Middle East could be a black swan event, not just for inflation, not just for economic activity, but also even for the Fed. You could make a logical argument that if you see a rapid rise in oil prices right now and gas were to go extremely high quickly, uh, which has already been the trend lately, then, yeah, you could really slow down economic activity. Maybe the Fed would even be forced to cut rates a lot sooner, which from that perspective, you could actually make an argument. This could be, unfortunately, good for Tesla as it could force the Fed to start cutting rates if the economy does start to feel some pain due to oil and you know, I I think people throw around oil just kind of loosely here. Oil is the number one most impactful commodity by far to the economy. And the price of oil, no doubt, slows down economic activity, whether it goes up and then vice versa. When oil prices fall, people tend to do more. For this Federal Reserve that is searching, basically begging for a reason to start cutting rates right now, this could be the reason that they have been looking for. This could also be politically uh, maybe motivating <laughs> to uh, cut rates as well, considering we are in an election year. The last thing the current administration would want is super high gas prices and a recession and for it to be unaffordable to buy a car or to finance a house or really just finance anything. Not to mention that if the price of oil goes up and gas goes up alongside it, well, I mean, you can make an argument that could be good for Tesla specifically because they are an EV company. So when people start to uh, fill their tanks, uh, hopefully gas does not go parabolic. But if it does, I mean, yeah, people filling up their gas tanks might force them to uh, kind of look at EVs differently. I, I actually answered this question in the trading community. If you guys want to join that, check out the link down below in the description of this video. But uh, members were asking if oil goes up, if gas goes up, if that could be a positive catalyst for Tesla, if, if that could be good. And I would say so. I mean, the last time oil was, you know, super high and gas was super high, you did see Tesla's sales do really well. Considering now Tesla is advertising, while well, more people may be educated, I, if you will, maybe, on uh, the cost of ownership for Teslas compared to internal combustion engine cars. So that is really how this situation could be a black swan event for our markets. It depends what happens. If there's a back and forth, if there's a full on, you know, war conflict or if Iran, you know, just strikes a, you know, a mediocre target and Israel doesn't do anything, this is not going to be a big deal. But if it does turn into a back and forth conflict, if this does turn into um, a situation where the supply of oil starts to get constrained, even like a five to 10 percent constraint on the Strait of Hormuz would have huge implications for energy, for oil markets, because of 30, 40% of the world's oil supply flows through there every single day. Just a slight constraint could be problematic, to say the least, for global oil markets. This article two hours ago says Israel calls off school trips and puts forces on full alert amid Iran threat. So likely, this is coming in just the next couple of hours. And Iran's Revolutionary Guard seizes a container ship near the Strait of Hormuz amid tensions with Israel. Normally, these events, these geopolitical tensions, they do cause weakness in our markets temporarily. But it really depends what is going to be impacted due to these geopolitical tensions. And in the case of oil, that could turn out to be a gray swan event for markets because of the implied damage that higher gas prices, higher energy costs could do to the economy, could do to corporate earnings, it may not be a good situation coming next week. But I will caution you in getting too bearish 
on Tesla. Now, you want to be bearish on the broad markets? That makes a lot of sense right now. It makes a lot of sense to be conservative and semi-bearish on the broader markets. The bull thesis is basically gone, okay? The bull thesis to start the year was the Fed's going to cut rates six times. That's not going to happen. The Fed's going to, you know, cut rates as soon as March was the expectation. Yeah, that's not going to happen. It's looking like September, maybe later than that. And it's looking like only two rate cuts. The bull thesis to start 2024 that really caused a majority of this rally that we've seen in the S&P and the Nasdaq was also inflation is falling. And that's good, not for just the Fed and being able to cut, you know, cut rates at the time. But if inflation is 3% for 10 years, that's right, 30% essentially, you have to take off the valuation of longer term growth assets. So if inflation is 3% and a company is growing at 20%, technically, if you factor out inflation there, you can even factor in the real yield of a 10-year treasury. You you can't assign a, uh, you know, a, a, a upper end premium on those growth multiples, those growth expectations because inflation is high because the the you know fed is going to keep rates higher because 10 year treasury yields are also higher it's known as your risk free return your risk premium right now uh to invest in stocks is not great and that's part of the reason why money is staying in money market funds is staying in cash on the sidelines right now but again i want to caution you on getting too bearish on tesla because tesla is already priced for really bad news it's priced for bad events it's priced for uh, bad earnings it's priced for basically everything bad there is very little good priced into tesla stock as it is the worst performer in the s p so far this year i believe just personally again i'll share my opinion that coming on tesla's earnings on april 23rd we are going to get confirmation the model 2 is not canceled that's bullshit that's ludicrous ludicrous people that have said that have no idea what they're talking about tesla is going to produce the first model twos for the robo taxi network along the same timelines as the original projection for the model 2 customer deliveries which was the second half of 2025 that's my expectation if i'm wrong there i'll be very surprised but the model 2 for the consumer is not canceled let's let's be real it's not canceled we're not going to get mass production we're likely not going to get consumer deliveries until giga mexico is done or maybe maybe they could build more you know assembly lines in giga texas who knows maybe maybe saying it, we're not going to get consumer deliveries until uh mexico is done maybe that's a little bit of of, of uh, an overshoot in in from my perspective, okay? But that's what I'm braced for. I'm braced for that. And I think the stock is braced for that as well. But the robo taxi is coming sooner. That's going to be really good news. I do think Tesla is going to take the stance of focusing more on profitability. And I think that's the number one thing in the near term that will drive Tesla stock higher on earnings. But now we have this new situation. Tesla cut prices of FSD. We we want to know what the path ahead looks like for that. If prices are going to rise, if this is going to be a business model like a Netflix that gets a lot of people subscribed and then starts raising prices. We just don't have a lot of clarity on this. We don't know what take rates look like with the FSD free trial. We don't have a lot of new details on that. But going out on a limb, we're probably going to see or hear more specifically some good news from tesla's management on all of these fronts that tesla is not priced for so from that perspective i think tesla stock could rally 20 percent the day after earnings 15 20 percent the day after earnings if i am correct if i am correct now if i'm half correct if some things happen some things don't um out of these three catalysts i just mentioned well, Tesla could probably still rally about 10%. That would be my expectation the day after earnings. Now, over the next coming months, if this gray swan event does materialize, cause the Fed to cut rates, if the price of you know oil and gasoline specifically starts to rise, that could be a positive tailwind to Tesla's business, not only just because the Fed is cutting rates, but people are going to look at how much they're spending on gas and say, maybe I do want to own an electric vehicle. Maybe that could make sense. And at the bare minimum, I think you'd get more people starting to look into the cost of ownership of EVs, which could translate into better deliveries, better sales for tesla but again in the very near term before tesla's earnings on april 23rd i would expect if this is a gray swan event if tesla stock uh does 
correlate to the broader markets. If people shrug off this good news that Tesla lowered the price of FSD, I would expect, I would go into next week as like, hey, you know, we 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 know we're going to have good things said on earnings on April 23rd. My opinion, obviously, I think I know. I may not know. I'm not a financial advisor, because so come to your own conclusions. But we're probably going to get some good positive news on April 23rd. But from now until then, specifically next week, shit could hit the fan. This could be a great swan event. Markets could be down 3% coming on Monday. If the worst possible scenario is, is realized um, from this conflict in the Middle East could be down more than that. It could be a 10% loss next week. Who knows? Okay. And I would expect Tesla to do poorly until Tesla's earnings are released on April 23rd. And if I'm correct, Tesla stock should do very well after that. And I will tell you, if Tesla sells off into their earnings, there's a lot greater chance that Tesla stock can rally more the day after earnings. So where it's sitting right now, I think Tesla could easily rally 10 to 20% after earnings. But if Tesla falls to 160, then that could be an even bigger rally. You could see Tesla trade like a meme stock if if uh, if we do have, you know, what I said announced. Confirmation the Model 2 is not forever canceled, that the robo taxis are likely just coming first. Consumer deliveries on the Model 2 will come next. If we get clarity on FSD strategy, what the take rates are, and they do plan to raise prices over time, that's also going to be great. Number three, if Tesla focuses more on profitability and they tell the markets, we're going to focus on boosting profitability and boosting EPS this year. And then we're, you know, going to not focus as much on delivering units, not to say they're they're not going to grow unit deliveries, but saying, hey, we're not going to cut prices to grow deliveries. Those three specific points and catalyst. <sighs> They're going to be massively positive for Tesla stock, especially the lower Tesla stock goes. But yes, in the meantime, this Middle East situation could be a black swan event or a gray swan event for markets. Let me know what you think about this down below in the comment section. But after all, it could force the Fed to start cutting rates. That could be a big positive for Tesla. And uh, after Tesla's earnings on April 23rd, things could come together in a very positive way constructive way for Tesla stock. So again, let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. If you guys want to come trade with us, check out that link down below in the description of this video as well. You guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.